Good afternoon. Welcome to Shrewsbury Bell for the Al Lynch Trophy preview show. I'm joined by Red and Rockets' AJ Bassey. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you getting on? Hey, I'm good. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I think first things first, like, congratulations on that uh, comeback win versus TVC. How did that game go for you? What was the you felt went well? What the thought made you to improve on for next week, this weekend? I thought we uh, we kind of started the game a little flat, came out a little flat. Um, uh, we weren't really sticking to our game plan. And um, so we got off to a pretty slow start, got into some foul trouble, uh, kind of threw a wrench in our rotation and stuff. And um, yeah, like they kind of just played right into right into sort of their their style and and and, and the way they, they kind of want to play. Um, definitely would not like to play from behind like that a whole lot more. You know, it was nice to come back and win. But um, yeah, you know, they're they're a really talented team, really athletic, had a lot of height in the paint. So it gave us some troubles in the first half. Uh, we weren't really boxing out, rebounding a whole lot uh, as as a unit. So. Uh, kind of cleaned that up, cleaned that up in the second half and we're able to come back, yeah. And as three seasons, obviously this year, Lee Lynch Trophy is sort of part of the three season, but you've had the Taylor Classic and you're in a really competitive group in your your um, division with the likes of yourself, TBC, Hemel and Oakland. How's both the Taylor Classic and this been in terms of getting you guys ready for the season? Yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's been great. Um, the, the the couple games that were then were nice just to get like our legs under ourselves and get out there as a unit. Uh, we were kind of practicing against each other for a couple of weeks at that point, so it was nice just to see a different team on the floor. Uh, just getting back to used to you know playing a game, having refs, having fans at the game. It was great, nice atmosphere. Um, we were down quite a bit of bodies that weekend, so. Um, it was just good to get some video, get some get some tape on ourselves and see how it looks against other teams. Um, I think that was kind of the main point of that weekend for us. Um, and then these couple of games in the Lynch, um, yeah, we have a pretty pretty solid group with, um, you know, we have Oakland's a young team in there, but uh, the other three teams I think are pretty, pretty high quality, um, should be amongst the top of the standings this season. So um, playing against teams, playing against Hamill, um, I think it's sort of just, getting us ready for uh, the start of the regular season as well. I totally agree. And I think it's a very competitive season. Having played TVC last weekend and obviously played them last year with Worthing, how would you compare the TV side this year compared to the TVC last season? I appreciate, obviously, it's just one game, but early thoughts on them. Uh, yeah, so I... Um... So when I was in Worthing, that was before the COVID season, before COVID, yeah. So um, obviously uh, Blaine's been there for a little bit and, you know, he's been holding down the guard spot for them and heck of a shooter. Um, they've, they've typically, you know, they've had Hakeem as well there and it's it's been a team that's, you know, that can light it up pretty quickly from when I was there. You know, they had Taylor Johnson was there, and Lewis was there. Um, a team that can really light it up, pretty athletic. So that sort of, it's still kind of been there for them. Um, obviously, you know, a few guys have, have, have changed in and out. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's been a team that's been typically pretty pretty dominant around the rim and in the paint. Um, and that was a huge focus for us. Uh, you know, we had to kind of limit that when we played them. And as you mentioned, obviously, you played for Worthing pre-COVID. I meant seeing them in the Taylor Classic. What do you think of them or what? What what do you, where do you think they'll finish roughly this season? Uh, the Worthing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think I think they got a they got a pretty solid veteran group. You know, their veteran core um, with with Tom and Ish uh, and, and Zaire, um, and then um, having having Crawford there and and Abdul and their pickup of uh, Dixon, I believe the taller guard there. Uh, I think they they have a they have a good group. Um, uh, that I, I think they would definitely be a playoff team in my mind. Um, very tough. It's a good environment to go play in as well. Um, so I, I'd expect them to be a pretty a pretty good team this year. But like to get people on the show is like to hear about memorable moments of training. What have been been some of your highlights if, or bloopers or ankle braces you other guys do, but sort of stick out for you from the last few weeks of training. 
Um, well, I think uh, I've seen our, our, there's a clip going around. Um, we had a we had, we had a big play from Cartano um, in our in our last game here, and and you know it was a very exciting moment. Uh, I think it was, a, it was a big shift in momentum for our game, and and, and it was a huge you know run that we went on the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, from being such a pivotal play leading to a timeout, um, we go, I think we see uh, Reese and uh, Cartano go uh, chest to chest and they both just tumbled over. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, our team's been having a good laugh about that whenever and someone ends up sharing it. Yeah, I've seen that doing the rounds. I, think, um, I can't remember the name of the person, but I'll put the clip in the description below. Really funny. What was your reaction when you first saw that? It was a really funny clip. Like you said, it was a breakaway move, change momentum, respect to celebrate, and you know the rest. You know, has been on social media already. Yeah. So, um, like when it originally happened, uh, I was on the floor as well. It kind of happened right in front of me, and uh, I know I kind of, yeah, I was surprised. Um, <laughs> kind of, you know, try to try to keep a straight face and you know keep it moving, get into the huddle. Um, so I didn't think too, too much about it. But uh, once I saw the clip, I definitely had myself a good laugh. But it's nice to know I kept uh, kept an okay poker face when it was happening right in front of me. Of course, the camera's always showing. That obviously, this weekend, you are playing at Sonnen and, and the, Hem, the Hemel game as well. Both games will be live streamed. So we'll be looking out for more funny moments. With that <laughs> game, and I say the momentum changed that point with the timeout and maybe coach able to instruct better to you. What are some of the things that either the coach or the senior guys seen during those moments help change the tide? Well, the biggest thing was just kind of hitting the reset button at halftime. Um, you know, uh, we, we I, I thought uh, apart from apart from the the actual win, um, I thought it was just it, it was such a great um, sort of show of like our team's characteristics and and the way we, we stuck together and fought um that it was, it was it was it's huge to have that kind of moment and have that test so early in the season um so really like uh throughout the whole first half you know a lot of things weren't going our way you know bounces weren't going our way and um they're able to build like a 15 17 point lead and, and um yeah we kind of just hit the reset button at the half um you know coach sort of reiterate our game plan things that we have to do with certain players certain plays and um it was, it was really just a, a lot of effort you know and um it was getting the opportunity again to, to, to just take a quick break and come back to the court um that, that's kind of all we needed um you know and, and getting a few stops and it, it would have to chip away you know you're not going to get that back all at once even in one quarter you know the the goal was just try to try to make the lead a little bit less than what it what it, what it was you know, at the end of the third and, and then go from there in the fourth. Well, you, you guys are executed really well. Talked about quick breaks, a quick word about our sponsors of this video. Three sponsors, Always Balling. This video is freely sponsored by Always Balling. We started offering freely sponsorship packages so that we can promote both yourself and our brand in a joint collaboration. For those who do not know, Always Balling one of the premier brands for British basketball clothing. They started out in 2011, inspired by basketball with a uniquely British take that basketball communities worldwide, of all ages, cultures, and nationalities that connect with and show their love and support for the game. They have a growing range of t shirts, hoodies, wristbands, performance wear, and bags. They also have customizable options. They also support the game by having a team of brand ambassadors throughout British basketball shine a light of what they're doing in the game today and in the past. As you see here, I'm wearing an Always Ball In t-shirt. We collaborated earlier on this calendar year to raise money for a charity. It's close to my heart, mine charity. I'll put a link in the description where you find the t-shirts and also more about my charity. For the purpose of this collaboration, for myself, I took no funds from this club. My cut to go to charity for the good work that my charity does, helping people in crisis and also doing awareness of mental health uh, conditions. It's been a really successful uh, collaboration. We've raised, I say, to the exact figure as I go to air, 
is £112 if you raise some money charity. That's a really great contribution to the charity. And thank you for everyone who's bought a T-shirt. T-shirts are still available online, but for a limited period, you can get your rebound colour base as, as uh, modelled by myself. They're available in an array of team colours in the NBL. Uh, go and check out the site for your chance to get one before they go. They'll be on Always Born site for the next week. So around the 7th of October, they won't be available. So get yours now if you don't want to miss out on this exciting shirt. If you like that shirt, obviously, we'll probably do more collaborations in the future. Watch this space for the latest updates. Also, watch this space for further developments. While I've got your attention, also, be sure to like and share this video. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So, like you said, it was a really good game. And you guys managed to come back well. And you've got a double head of this weekend. How's... How's coach prepared you for those two names? Are you looking at Solent first, Ben Hemel, or is it a little bit of both? Because there's a short turnaround between the two names. Yeah, we're definitely definitely looking at uh, a little bit of both. Um, you know, Solent being the first opponent, um, we've got to you know we'll focus on them a little bit more. Um, and uh, and then yeah, like we'll, we'll we'll be preparing for Hemel as well a little bit throughout the week, and then really try to shift our focus as soon as that first game ends and, you know, start start looking at them this, for the for the second game. And I don't want to get too deep into my next question, it's a, a service-level question, but obviously Reese Pillett left, went into Solo, come back. I imagine having him play at Solo for that little time during pre-season, he's probably got a bit of an inside edge. Has he been able to give you some like, useful tips in terms of when he's been uh, in the leader for this big game? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, especially in a in a in a league like this, and it's there's been a lot of a lot of roster turnover, you know, from season to season. A lot of guys, a lot a lot of familiarity. You know, guys play against each other or with each other for years and years. So, um, we're having having a few guys on the team that that's sort of been around for a while, know a lot of guys. It's very helpful. But then, yeah, Reese just you know coming fr fresh from there after spending like a month with the team. Uh, in terms of just scouting report, understanding player tendencies, you know, things that they like to do. Obviously, it's no it's no secret. You know, you can watch tape on the player as well. So, but it's it's just nice to have that have that knowledge kind of firsthand. And and he's been he's been great, really helpful. You know, getting us uh, getting us ready and prepared. Definitely. And um, in terms of training intensity, do you as players notice the difference in terms of training head of double head to take it slightly less hard, or do you still have that same intensity for a double header weekend? Um, I think it, we just gotta be smart about you know uh, about the, the the load later in the week. But um, in terms of our our training schedule or plan, it's it's kind of the same you know most weeks. Um, you just you just gotta be a little bit smarter with uh, with, with workouts and, and and maybe the duration of our training sessions, but. Uh, we're still we're still preparing for the same same sort of way. See Sunday is the last group game in the LH Trophy, guys. You got the advantage group for two O record, a Hemel one all, and I think TBC a two one. Uh, what are you expecting from Hemel this weekend? I expect a really tough game. Uh, I think they're I think they're a really good team. They got a great roster for the end of the season. You know, obviously they had a they had a. They had a good run last year, um, getting all the way to the, the championship game in the in the playoffs. Um, so I know their their core that they brought back uh, with the player of the year. Um, they're going to be tough, you know. Obviously, picking up uh, Johnson from uh, from Thames Valley is a big pickup for them. Um, Sam Newman coming back to the team. Um, so I know they they're going to have a have a good great great lineup put together. We're expecting two tough games this weekend, but um, I think. I think it's a great test really early to get us started with uh, the rest of the campaign. Yeah, and obviously everyone's waiting to hear about the Elnich Trophy. Not out stages. I understand there's no draw this season, but they'll release the dates when they, they can shortly, but that, that'll be them releasing due course. Having had to play the guys in the Taylor Classic, seeing teams around the league get the wins and losses and play the teams you've played, do you feel like you're getting a better idea who you might expect to be in the top four? Is it still such an open lead for you guys this year? Um, I think there's uh, 
a handful of teams that are pretty pretty high quality. Um, I think there's going to be like the there's going to be a, a pretty a pretty intense battle in the, in, the, in the middle of the standings for you know cleaning up the last few playoff positions. Um, but yeah, like based off from last year to this year, um, you know, obviously you know what to expect from Solon um, and, and Thames Valley and Hamill, I expect to be right up there as well uh, with ourselves. We have high expectations, um, high hopes for this season. Um, from what I know, uh, Nottingham has, you know, put together a really solid roster as well and uh, Derby. You know, expect them to be good again. So I think there's really, you know, I'm looking at five, six, seven, eight really, really tough teams um, that that will be, you know, on any any week, any game can sort of sort of beat anybody. Yes, very competitive game. A little similar time to when you guys play Solent. Um, your former club were in for a couple of seasons to play Essex. What do you think will happen in that game? And have you spoke to any of the guys since and sort of, what sort of talks do you have behind the scenes with all the clubs? I would expect, um, you know, I don't know a whole lot of Essex, um, but you know, compared to Worthing, um, I, I, I do think they're a little bit younger, a little bit less experienced. And, you know, Worthing having that sort of veteran, veteran group, um, you know, a good group of players, I, I would expect Worthing to, to come up with a win in that uh, Lynch game. And I know... Reddit has a venue issue in terms of games in play time closed doors. Have you guys been given an update where you can expect to have fans back in again? No, I have not too sure. Uh, I originally thought it was going to be this upcoming weekend, but uh, maybe it's pushed back just uh, another another week or two. Um, so no, no, no set update has been given on to what game will be moved. But uh, yeah, so as of now, this, week, this weekend as well, uh, we found out it'll be behind closed doors. And 100%. And many fans, the game at Sony will have fans in it, but it'll also be on live streamed on YouTube. I'm really honest to be commentating that. God, I think it's going to be an excellent game. And it could be sort of a real good litman test for you guys versus Sony. Um, obviously, we saw it a bit earlier. Final question before you go. Sony, obviously, I've had that pedigree for winning games and Reddit having a history and obviously be widely tipped. How much do you think we should take from this game coming in the weekend in terms of looking forward to title top four? Or do you think that it's too soon to tell no matter what way the result goes this weekend? Um, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a long season, you know. Um, you can definitely say it's, it's, it's one game, you know, because it is. Um, but uh, we're excited for the opportunity. You know, obviously, um, Solent has has been a powerhouse in this league for a number of years, um, and we, you know, we have we have high expectations and high hopes on our group this year. And you know, we kind of want what they have. Um, so, so I think there's there's no better way than to than to put that to the test and you know, playing playing the defending champs, playing in their gym. Um, so we're we're just excited and looking forward to that opportunity this weekend. I'm sure everyone's looking forward and excited to watch you guys play. I get goosebumps just uh, listening to you saying, I want what they have. That's great fight and talk ahead of a big game. For you guys watching, I'll put all the links to the live streams in the description as well as on our social medias. Thank you for coming on, my guy, Jim Asley. Take care and um, all the best for the weekend. For sure. Thank you for having me, man. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, it's super cool what you do, you know, bringing in more eyes and attentions to the league and to the sport in general. So I appreciate it. And I know the whole basketball community does too. Thanks, Chris. Thank